What we're going to be doing today is team building. We're going to be team building for VGC 2023 and we're actually building a team to not 100% check Don Dozo, but we're going to be utilizing a team that would normally struggle with Don Dozo and making slight changes to give it an amazing Don Dozo matchup. The team that we're going to be building today is featuring Sandstorm. It's uh, a standard Sandstorm core. You know, normally that would be things like Tyranitar. That would be things like Garchomp. Uh, things like Lycanroc or Houndstone as a Sand Rush user, and maybe even something like an Amoongus. You know, Amoongus with that poison typing can cover up for the fighting weakness on things like Lycanroc and Titar. Titar has always been the de facto Sandstorm user for VGC. A lot of people are like, you could use Silk Cobra, or you could use Hippowdon. Hippowdon's really good in singles, but in VGC, it's always been Tyranitar. It has a good speed stat for the most part. It, uh, you know, deals a ton of damage. It gets taunt. It's a lot more aggressive. But I really do think that Titar, it saddens me to say this, Titar is the weak link that's been holding Sand back from being the best weather in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It just has too many weaknesses, it requires you to Terra to use it, and the support that you would be able to offer with the Titar is not nearly uh, as valuable as maybe support from something else. So what we're going to be doing is building a Sandstorm team that features Hippowdon. It's going to be one small change to a Sandstorm core that's going to completely change the speed, the tempo that this uh, team goes into most of its matchups, and it's going to completely change how it just handles the Dondozo matchup specifically. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at Pokemon Showdown here. Let's just write down like a standard Sandstorm team. Let's get it all out. You'd go Tranitar, right? You'd go Garchomp. Um, you'd pick a Sand Rush user. I think uh, Lycanroc is a very good one, but you can also pick Houndstone. Um, and you want to pick the uh, Sand Rush Lycanroc. And like I said, the last few spots can be a wide variety of things. You can go with like a Tailwind setter like a Murkrow. You can go with like a Redirection Mom with like an Amoongus. I think for this one, we're going to go with an Annihilate. And we're going to talk about why Annihilate in just a few moments. And the last two spots, we're going to be building a team that looks like it might have a bad Dondozo matchup. But what we're going to be doing is baiting them into bringing their Dondozo. Remember, once the Dondozo is there, it can't switch. And then punishing them. If I if I had like an Amoongus or a Murkrow here, they wouldn't bring the Dondozo. We want them to bring it so we can beat it. And to do that, we're going to be using our own Dondozo. We're going to be using our own Dondozo and Tatsugiri. And we're going to be using some really, really cool stuff. Uh, really, really cool stuff in this one. What do you guys think of this team so far? After we switched out the Tyranitar for a Hippowdon. Also, like, what is Titar... What, what is what is Don Dozo weak against? Like electric attacks and stuff like that? Hey, Powdon. Hey, Powdon. Like, what do you guys think of that team so far? How Lycanroc. How Lycanroc is really cool. We're not going to be using that. But yeah, someone was talking about T-Tar cost is too high in this format to use, and you're exactly right. Yeah, I've used a lot of T-Tar. I use it a lot with like leftovers, thunder waves, taunts, and things like that. But in reality, it just gets absolutely dumpster. If we take a look at some of the usage stats, right? On like Picolytics, Meowskarot is now the most used Pokemon. Absolutely dumpsters T-Tar. It can dumpster um, Hippowdon as well, but Hippowdon has so many different ways to play against it. Goldango has a better matchup against Titar than uh, uh, Hippowdon. Sylvan has a much better matchup against Titar than uh, something like Hippowdon. So like you can kind of see a lot of these mods annihilate Dondozo. Even Hydreigon has a decent matchup against Titar. So it's like, because they usually go stare at Terra Steel. So all the mods in the meta are made to beat Titar. So they mean, they're, they're used to their sand matchup being a lot easier because they can deal with the Lycanroc, and then all their good mons beat Titar. But, you know, we have ways to play around it by using a Powdon. Do I have any idea when home support is coming to Scarlet Violet? I don't know. I do not know. But I do think a Powdon's a really, really good mon. So what I'm going to be doing here now is just adding some moves to generally flesh out the roles of these Pokemon before actually going in, adding all my EVs. I like to just add a couple moves to each one before 100% securing, like, this has to be built with a Scarf, this has to be built with this, this has to be dealt with that. So what we're going to do is just add some moves that we know we want to have on these Pokemon. I think the number one move that Hippowdon gets that Tyranitar doesn't is Yawn. This is such a good move in this format. It forces switches, it forces patient play, it forces you to play the game at the tempo that I dictate as the Yawn user. If you stay in, you get punished by the rest of my team. If you switch, you're losing tempo, which means my team that doesn't even have a Tailwind user is able to like wait out any sort of speed control that you have. So I really, really think that Yawn is absolutely amazing. Um, other than that, I think other moves we're gonna want, we're gonna try Slack off here. And I would say anytime you're using Yawn, you do want to try to add Protect so you can weave in those Yawn Protects and then probably add like a Leftovers or something there. So it's very similar to the Tranitar set that I've already been running, but it's a little bit different, which we'll talk about when we add the rest of the moves in a little bit later. Garchomp definitely need that EQ, EQ baby. 
Earthquake, absolutely massive. I still like the Dragon Claw. And then I think we're probably going to use Rock Slide. These are just the standard Garchomp moves. And then from there, I think we're going to go Protect because we're probably going to run a Bright Powder set. I, I'm just a fan of Bright Powder Chomp in this format. Um, I like this a lot. So Lycanroc, we've used Lycanroc before. Protect is very, very good on Lycanroc. And we're going to go with uh, Rock Slide and Close Combat. I like Close Combat for the Sam Mirror, so you can hit other T-Tars. Forces them to go Flying Terra, which you can bait with the Protect. And then you just uh, hit them with a Rock Slide. I'm going to leave this last spot open because like uh, Lycanroc can get a bunch of really good moves in this last spot. So we're just going to leave that open. Go into Annihilate. There's a few things we can do with Annihilate, right? There's a few things we can do with Annihilate. Oh, why don't you guys tell me that that the freaking thing was like cutting into my camera. There we go. No one tells me anything. Professional streamer extraordinaire, right? There we go. All right. So, um, yeah, with Annihilate, you can go with like a Defiant set and do all these other cool things and go with like Rage Fists. I realistically, I realistically think this is going to be a Final Gambit set. So we're going to go Final Gambit here. And for the Dozo Tatsugiri, right? For the Dozo Tatsugiri, I think our Dozo is probably going to run sub. I'm thinking about sub. I don't know yet. I might even make it like a Rest Talk set. I think like Rest Talk is actually really, really good. So we're going to go Rest. We're going to go Sleep Talk. We're going to leave those last two moves open. And on the Tatsu, this is where things are going to get a little bit different. We know we probably want Draco Meteor. And we know we probably want Muddy Water. Now, how does this team beat Dozo? We haven't even talked about how this team baits the Dozo, beats the Dozo yet. We're going to start slowly adding things to make sure that we can beat Dozo. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into this Apowdon set, right? This last move is going to completely change how you've ever seen this Pokemon in competitive play. Because what are you going to do? Earthquake? That doesn't beat Dozo. Ice Fang? You could freeze it, I guess. None of these moves beat Dozo. But there's one move that does. This move. Fisher which is legal in VGC, which is legal in like the online battles. The only format that's not legal is, is Smogon. You may be thinking like, that's not accurate. It's 33% chance to hit. Well, we, if we make ourselves unable to be KO'd by their Dondozo and make it so we can leave and protects, yawns, have like leftovers, make it so they have to basically Fisher us back. All we have to do is hit a Fisher before they do. And this turns a Pokemon that would not normally have a Dozo matchup into baiting that Dondozo matchup, making them go all in with that Dondozo matchup only to get an L. So it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. Now, how else do we want to beat the Dozo? Well, we could put the Endeavor here. Cool thing about Endeavor here is it makes them have that same health as us if we have like a Sash, and then it makes them out of one, and we can just kill them with any of these other mons. So that's another Dundozo check. That's two. Third Dundozo check. Final Gambit, technically, maybe, you know, Annihilate can get a high base HP, which can technically, you know, do most of it on Dozo's health, and maybe we finish off with like a Garchomp or something. So that's an option. But... We still have a couple other ways to do it. We're going to go with Fisher on our Dondozo as well. That's right. We have two Fisher users. Two Fisher users. You may be thinking to yourself, like, that's it. You have two Fisher users. How are you ever going to hit their Dondozo if they go Flying Terra? And they do go Flying Terra sometimes because they go Flying Terra to check the Dondozos that go Grass Terra so they can, like, check the check. Um, there's also a couple other things. How are you going to hit, like, a Corviknight? How are you going to hit something weird? You know, that's in the air. Something with levitate. Well, that's where something like this comes in. And you're just like, bro, you can't soak with Dozo on the board, but you can soak with a Tatsu, have whatever happened to it, then bring in the Dozo. Or you can soak with a Tatsu and then go for a Fisher with a Hippowdon. So this gives us late game options and gives Tatsu like a viable role in the team. Even for those late game situations, I really, really like this with the Tatsu. Really, really like the soak here. The last move on our Dozo is probably going to be Order Up. And I'm thinking for the Tatsu probably like icy wind because we're probably just gonna scarf it i don't see a problem with that you can go with it you can even go terra blast if you really wanted to like make it something weird but i i think icy wind is fine uh this makes it so like in the late game scenarios we can outspeed things that would normally outspeed rock so we can like outspeed mouseradas icy wind to break sashes and then like things like garchomp and like rock can finish them off so this is pretty good yeah this is for doubles Hi, trying to learn competitive Pokemon and came across YouTube vids. Been binge watching them while working for a while now. Well, appreciate it. Thank you. So this is the team so far. What we're going to do now after we have a lot of our moves sorted out. We don't have that many moves on this guy. We'll flesh this out when we get to him. But now we're going to start picking, make sure our abilities are right. That's the next thing that I like doing when I build teams. Sandstream is right. Sandvale is right. This guy has to be uh, Sand Rush. Doubles our speed. 
Annihilate, you can go with Vital Spirit. I don't think there's a problem with Vital Spirit, um, but I will go with the Defiant just to do it. Um, and then this guy definitely still has the Unaware, and the Tatsu has the Commander. So pretty standard stuff. Let's uh, start adding some items that we know we might want to use in these guys. We're going to add Leftovers over here. We are going to add a, uh, a Bright Powder over here. Love the Bright Powder. Going to add a Focus Sash. And, ah, oh, yeah, actually, are we going to Scarf the Tatsu? I guess that I guess that means we can just go Protect here. Um, and because we're going to Scarf the Annihilate, because it's definitely going to be a Final Gambit set. And the whole way I like to play Annihilate is I like to bring it out in the mid-game. Like, I, I like to be mid-game, like, bring that out. Like, they get a KO on one lawn, you bring the Annihilate out, out and just take out, like, for example, something like a Steel Terra Hydragon would absolutely just end this Garchomp's life. And, like, Annihilate can come out and just be like, bro, you're done, you know? Um, Sash Counter... Uh, we're already using a Sash on the Lycanroc. We could think about using Sash counter on Lycanroc, but I think the Endeavor is fine. Um, yeah, Final Gambit's there, good. We don't really know what item we want here yet. That's the thing. We could go um, Chesto. We could even go, like, is this, a, is this an answer? Like, if I were to clear Amulet here, would that protect me from Clear Smog? I think that it would. Would that protect me from Haze? I don't know. I would definitely use this though if that was an idea. If that was like an option, have you guys seen that? Not haze. Okay, so it protects you from the curse mog, not the haze. That's okay. I think it. I think it would. Let's see what other items are good here. Something like a citrus berry is fine too. I don't really think there's a problem with that. You could even go with like um, a mental orb here, but we'll just we'll sit on citrus for now. All right, and we'll go with this. This guy will have the, uh, so we already used Sash and Scarf, which means this guy can be basically anything. Can like literally be like any any set that we want here. Hmm. I'm gonna go Quick Claw. <laughs> I don't think there's a problem with specs in a lot of these situations, but like we're already using our Sash, we're already using our Scarf. Those are the two common items, and you can actually check like, Go into your usage stats, go into Tatsu, and you can see like the common playstyle, the common moves that these guys like to run. Um, you can see the common teammates, and you can see like the common items. Some people like to run Citrus on it, apparently. I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think there's a problem with Adrenaline Orb either. I can, go, I can even go like Air Balloon if I wanted, and make it so we can pair with Garchomp just a little bit easier. Plunder Policy, that'd be really funny. Hmm, what are some good... What are just some good choices here hard to say exactly lumberry is sometimes usable hmm we're getting bad we're getting down to the weird items now i think safety goggles is sometimes good sometimes there's value in um shed shell against like perish See, we're getting into those weird items now. Um, we have weaknesses to Fairy and Dragon, so we could technically put like one of those damage reduction berries on. Let's go back to the top. Hmm. Let me think about this. If I were to put a, this is gonna sound weird, a eject button, I can use this as a pivot very easily. I can just swap in, soak just a little bit of damage from like a water attack if my Hippowdon's pinned, and then I can repin with something that immediately checks like that Annihilate. So I like the eject button here. It just lets us reapply weather if we need to, and it lets us pivot just a little bit easier. I, don't, I do not dislike that play. And if they KO it, I get to just repin anyways with whatever I want. So good, it's a win-win. Um, let's start adding some Eevees. We don't want to do Terra yet. We just want to do some Eevees. Would you do the final game at Toxic Orb Strat if you have a spot for another Mon? No, nah, I don't want to do that. Covert Cloak for fake outs. Uh, Covert Cloak's a good idea. I, I like this play better with the Eject button. But let's start adding some EVs. I think Hippowdon definitely would be mons that get, a Mon that gets like diminishing returns from your HP stat. So like if I go full HP, we're leaving um, our special defense stat high and dry. But I do think we want to be like heavy actual defense stat to be able to wall the Dondozo in the first place because they're going to get plus two and they're going to come in hot with like order ups. Uh, we're going to probably have to go Grass Terror or some other Terror type to change it. Um, so we have to not die to that. We have to not die to the Wave Crashes and Liquidate. So we want to be heavy defense. I think something like 196 is probably going to be correct with a uh, 60 in here. And normally I would like to always say you should put like four 
to 12 to 20 to 28 in speed, but hip out on such a niche mon. I don't think you need any speed. And from there, you just go here. Um, realistically, it might even be better to go uh, with a bolt. Um, with zero attacks, you take less damage from something like uh, Confusion and or Foul Play. So I think this is just a little bit better in this situation. But so far, good. Um, Garchomp, I think you still need to be full speed on Garchomp. Um, but I also think that Garchomp could benefit from even cutting Dragon Claw in some situations and going for like a Sword Stance set with Bright Powder. I think there's value in that on a lot of teams. So you can go something like... I think it's worth a shot. I think... Let's try it. Let's try it. Swords Dance. We're still going to go with the Rock Slide. I think Rock Slide's still really, really good on Garchomp. I mean, you can you can cut the Rock Slide for Dragon Claw if you want. That's what most people would do. Um, but I feel like 90% of the time you're going to be clicking Dragon Claw. Like, you could just be clicking Rock Slide to protect. Or even per or going Swords Dance to bait them into overprotecting. And going over, over into you and just then protect bait them out. We still need to be full speed uh, to speed tie other Garchomps. Um, but then I think you can get away with like probably like a 156. Uh, again, Garchomp would get diminishing returns on it on some of its other stats if you go too high. Um, we would still probably want to go with like 60 here and then a 20-20 spread. And this Garchomp's gonna be thick, like dummy thick AF. Um, and I really think this Garchomp would be very, very good. I think this is worth a shot trying. And if it doesn't work, like this is gonna be really, really big after just one sword stance. So we're in a good spot. I think it's great. Lycanroc, definitely you just click the button, but you gotta make yourself jolly here. And you don't want to put the last four in HP because you want to be able to endeavor for a lower amount. If anything, realistically, you would be taking out these points and making it so you would endeavor for lower HP, which we actually, like, we totally could do that, but I think it's fine to go 31 here. It's a min-max thing. It really depends on, you know, a bunch of other factors, but this is absolutely fine. Uh, Annihilate, uh, 252, easy. 252 plus, minus. So we're going to add, like, U-turn here. Um, I like U-turn. I like uh, close combat. And I like... I think there's value in Brick Break here. There's value in Encore here too. Um, Choice Scarf Encore can sometimes be usable. It's kind of hard to explain, but it definitely can still be usable. Choice Scarf Taunt can also be usable. Um, there are situations where like you can totally win matchups just by doing stuff like this. Let's see. What is a really, really... We can even go like Curse. Choice Scarf Curse, bro. <laughs> there's so many good moves you can add. Um, Gunk Shot's another decent one to be able to pin Sylveons. You can even add Phantom Force, which I think... I think I'm going to try the Phantom Force. If we don't like it, we can always take it up. That's that's basically it. Put the last four in attack. You're good to go. Dondozo Bozo. Uh, you want the heavy HP, right? But then you get massive diminishing returns on your defense and special defense stats. And so because we're going to be going into the Bozo Mirror Match, we want to be heavy defense. I'm talking like big defense. Um... We don't need to actually deal damage, and we're actually going to be using the Tatsu that gives, um, what Tatsu form is this? I can't see. This is the one that gives defense, right? So we're going to be getting all the defense boost, but we're going to, ah, how do I word this then? Maybe something like a 204 in sped up then, with still going nature there. This would still give me an emission return, so maybe like a 212 with, we're, we'll put 12 here. And then we'll put the rest into this slot. So go like a 76-4. All right. So that still get, it gets a little bit of diminishing returns on sped death, but it makes us very, very bulky. And then we're going to be relying on the commander boost and the Tatsu order up boosts here. So I like this a lot. Does Spore get lower priority? It only gets lower priority on Toad's Cruel. So yeah, Toad's Cruel's ability makes it go last um, when using support moves. And for the Tatsu here, I feel like you do need to be fast, um, just so you can use those soaks before actually anything bad happens to you. Might as well put the last four in HP. And now that we got all this stuff done, we want to take a look at Terra options. So this is where the team's going to get its last little bit of flavor. And I think that we want to go Grass Terra here. There's, You either want to go Grass or Flying, and I think Grass is fine. Um, it makes it so that first big water attack from their dozo, you just go grass to stop it. It lets you get the yawn off, you go for protect, and you get like two or three turns to try and fisher it. That's the idea. Garchomp, I think you want to double dip the dragon, um, but, or sorry, not dragon. You want to double dip the ground, and I think that's just how I like playing Garchomp, so we're going to stick with that. Lycanroc, you definitely want to go ghost here, though, so you can avoid fake outs and things like e-speeds and stuff like that. So we want to go ghost. Uh, Annihilate, uh, might as well just go ghost to avoid, um... It doesn't really matter, but we want to go with it on Annihilate then, right? I guess that we would go Grass. You'd go Grass here so you would avoid um, Rage Powders, right? 
and the dozo dozo this is where we're gonna be good i'm gonna go flying dozo to be able to avoid other dozos this is the last little bit of tech to avoid other dozos using fisher this is the this is where the tech comes in i like it yeah i know a lot of people are talking about like toxic orbing your tatsu i don't think we need to do that i, I don't think there's a point i mean it's there's a point but like i don't i'd rather just uh play standard but I, I guess like if you guys really wanted to see us do that we definitely could and Tatsu, I think I would just go with, uh, I like Ghost here to be able to avoid fake outs and other weird stuff. It makes it so like if they want to go for, we can stay on the board as long as possible, but it's not really that important. So this is the team and uh, let's go play some games with it. So let's see a little bit of Trick Room. We don't have an Imprison user, but we have so many good mods. Like I really, really like the Annihilate Bleed versus Trick Room teams. Like we can just absolutely pop off the base hp on that thing is should be lower than my annihilate so we can definitely need to lead an output we don't want to pick it in the first slot because that would tell them that we know that we want to do this first i think in these sort of situations you almost always want to lead dozo to make them like over respect those slots like if i lead dozo and you lead like hariyama this far giraffe i'll just you'll fake out the dozo and i'll be able to get a free final gambit and then i just bring in my tatsu for free and then i'm good to go um so i like that a lot so annihilate dozo we have the Tatsu in the back. And then I think that Garchomp's probably the right play. We have Rock Slide there. We have EQ there. We just have to make sure to get the Hariyama off the board. And then Garchomp wins the game. Exactly the lead that I said. It's almost like I play the game. Um, I actually do need to check. I, maybe I messed this one up. What is the health on Far Giraffe? We can do this by going in here, sorting out HP. Far Giraffe should be lower than Annihilate, right? And I hope it's like a 115 or something. I'm gonna assume it's like 108 or like 100. I'm not even seeing it down here. Is it? No way. Is it higher than me? No way. I'd be like, it, it could be Sash too. That'd be super. Or it could go Ghost. It's 120. Oh shit, dude! I messed up. That's a that's a mess up for me then. 100% mess up for me. We're still gonna find Gambit and hope that they didn't go full HP. And like, I guess we'll just go with an order up in that slot in case they don't fake out. Fake out's fine. The crit never lucky. Final Gambit leaves it at five percent, so unlucky. Um, I completely just botched that one there. I thought I'd have a, I thought I would have a higher speed tier. We could come out with the Tatsu, or we can go into the Garchomp. Um, we can come in with Garchomp here, and then bait them into that slot, and then just go for a Tatsu. So we go pivot in the Tatsu and go for an order up into that slot. It's a misplay for me, hundred percent misplay. One twenty, that thing is nuts. I wouldn't even have went with the United Strat for that. I thought that it would be like a one hundred eight. I thought that it would be like a 108, but we definitely still need to get that guy off the board and get these defense stats going. So let's see what they have. Um, Dazzling Gleam wouldn't really be doing that much here. We're also doing this to bait them into like wasting their attack into the Garchomp slot. Hyper Voice doesn't do that much. Yep, we thick. Knock off. Let's see. Jabated. Get that defense boost, boys. Get the big defense boost. And they're going to take that burn. So we can start going for rests. We can start going for a bunch of different stuff here. Let's think about what else we want to do. I miss Prankster Encore. You could, it's still in the game, isn't it? So Sylveon, a little bit of a problem on the Sylveon. Um, we need to get Hariyama off the board. There's no reason not to like do that. I mean, we'll just go order up into the Hariyama, see how much damage it does. Knockoff does a lot. It knocks out our Citrus Berry right before we'd be able to use it. Unfortunate, unlucky, but we're just gonna rest next turn. And then there's a Throw Spray set, wow. It's not doing that much. That's a crit. Wow. So I think what we're going to do for the next like few turns is just go for like rests. And realistically, I don't think there's a problem with going flying Terra here. Because we're going to eventually probably need to use something else anyways. And I like the flying Terra because it makes it so the close combat would just do less damage this first turn. This is the first turn that's the most important. That's like the last turn of Trick Room. The last two turns. So we can just go for rest here. There's close combat block. It's almost like I play the game. Get those stat drops. We're just going to let you tick up from burn. Don't crit me. Cool. Big rests. Oh my goodness. And sleep talking to those fishers. Fisher Price. Let's go. Let's go. And let's see what they're going to be doing out here. Oh, the pivot. Show me that fisher in that slot, bro. That's really smart of them. They were able to like come in and reapply a fake out later. Do we get that fisher? Oh, never lucky. All right, we got one more turn of sleep talk. We're going to be able to outspeed these two after this. Um, that King Gambit might be an issue. I wish we still, I wish we had room for lefties on this set, but we just don't. We just don't. Fisher! Oh, dude, that's X1. Next to Never Lucky. Okay. 
Torto Cleave does a decent amount. We can actually live through one more. So we're going to order up here to get just a little bit more defense. I think it's the right play. And then we'll go for our rest play and we'll be good to go. If they crit us, we lose probably. But like, we'll see how this works. We'll see. They might be pivoting in too. If they try and pivot out something. For, they wouldn't be pivoting out Sylveon. They'd be pivoting out the King Gambit too. So they wouldn't be expecting this play. There's the wake up. We could definitely go for a rest if we wanted to. But I don't think we need to. The defense boosts are really, really good for mitigating the damage from the Corto Cleave as well. It just makes so they have to crit. Yeah, they got nothing. So we're running out of rest, though. We only have seven, dude. I wish I had 16 of these things. There's the pivot of the Hari, so he's going to be taken out from burn. Free rest, like, absolute massive value. Like, that was your shot. You need to pivot last turn, which means, like, I made the right play. So Hari, I'm just going to be taken out. Go for a sleep talk. You're going to probably fake out this turn, but, like, we're good to go. We have two mods we can order up. We're eventually going to be able to fish her out that Sylveon, too. Awesome. Sleep talk rest. Dude, never lucky, bro. Never, ever lucky. Close combat. We're flying tight. You're probably pivoting out that slot for uh, Sylveon. We still get the defense boost even if you pivot. We're just going to go after it regardless. Yep. Good play. They go for a Corto Cleave. It's not going to do that much. We can try one Fisher here. Might as well. And then we'll go for rest. So basically... Yeah, they just scooped it up. Easy peasy. Can he still sucker punch you if he uses fake out? He, yeah, he could have. Because I would have been, I would have been clicking an attacking move. It's a great question, but yeah, he could have. We'll take those. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now we know not to go for final gamut on far draft though. <laughs> All right, very very standard. Um, you see the Amoongus over there. Amoongus is definitely gonna be coming to give us issues here. I kind of wanted to put sub on this set, but I don't think we'll be able to get away with it. Annihilate's a good Mon, but I think it's better off using the back. I think Hippowdon Garchomp's great here. Hippowdon Garchomp's great with something like Annihilate to come in mid-game and just get the Sylvan off the board if it tears into something weird and uh, just bring Lycanroc. So again, Dozo's super, super good, but we don't have to bring it. Um, so let's go. Survey says Murkrow Garchomp. Awesome, that's great. Great, great. I think we're just gonna... I don't know if I want to SD while the Murkrow's still on the board, so we're just gonna yawn the Garchomp slot. And go for, just go for a rock slide. This forces Tailwind. And if you want to go Tailwind, like double dip the ground Terra, like be my guest. Hippowdon has uh, leftovers and Garchomp has Bright Powder, which means you might miss. Bright Powder and Sand Veil. Like we don't need to play defensive this turn. Next turn we can weave and protect. Next turn we can pivot and do all those other things. But we want to be able to do as much damage as Murkrow this turn as possible. And we don't want to Swords Dance until Murkrow's gone. It's very, very important to not Swords Dance. I think Murkrow might get two shotted by Rock Slide and Sandstorm damage. But, you know, we'll see. See what they're gonna do. Protect Garchomp? Dude, not bad. Are you gonna taunt me? Taunt my Garchomp. Stopping the potential sword stance. Nice stuff. So this turn they're wanna, gonna wanna go into taunting my Hippowdon. And so if they're gonna do that, I'll just protect and get like one more rock slide weaved in. Tailwind. Wow, no, no way. Dude, they missed the Dragon Claw value. Do we take those? Alright, so one more of these and we're good to go. They're gonna throw a fadeaway taunt into that slot. That is absolutely fine. Dragon Claw does not take us out at all. Foul played the double dip. Oh, never lucky, bro. Unlucky. Fisher misses. Unlucky there, too. I can't believe they're not taunting us. Like, I really, really can't believe they're not taunting us. All right, so we are fine here, though. We can just go Rock Slide to finish off the Merc or the Guard. Yeah, you got the idea. You would go for Yawn here. No, fuck that. They're just going to taunt. They're just going to taunt, bro. It's Fisher. Oh, it's his Rock Throw. This is the wrong move shit dude bro the flex how did no one catch that fucking rock throw bro rock throw bro <laughs> yo can i get a fisher price never lucky that's o2 for fishers but like they can't break us with that chomp dude this is their last turn tailwind too, so this is gonna expire, and then like Annihilate's gonna be great for trading in the back. We can actually even go for an uh we can even go for a Terra here. Yeah, this is gonna block the E speed. Um so what we're gonna do here is I realistically think we can go for a I think he'd be on the guard chomp for sure. And then we Terra Ghost and go for the Endeavor here. They might go protect EQ, but I doubt it. 
They're not going to take up from Sandstorm yet. Water Arcanine. Holy Pog Champ, bro. EQ, bro. Just hit his own Arcanine. Yo, we take those all the way to the bank, yo. So Garchomp's going to be taking a nice little nap next turn. Tailwind is done. Annihilate in the late game comes out. Final game. Did these. Oh, of course it's Goldango. All right. That's fine. If you flying to, we probably lose. We could go Phantom Force into that slot. He already turned. He turned into water. Yeah. Final Gambit and the Garchomp, Fisher, the Goldango. Realistically, the right play here is probably to slack off and soak the damage from the first. Make it rain, and then we want to protect. Dazzling Gleam. Ow, is that Specs, bro? Ow, 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 ow. That looks so much like Specs. We can't go for Yawn. We're going to protect. We get one Fisher shot. We get one shot. One opportunity. Mom Spaghetti. Bro. Bro! That's a plus one and done. Freaking rock slide. <laughs> rock, rock throw. That's funny. Finally lucky, yo. That's right. All right, Earthworm Jim over there. We can't really use the Fishers against that guy. Uh, it's going to make Garchomp a lot harder to use. See, that thing is like the exact type of thing that Annihilate and like Rock are great against. Um, we can still definitely bring Hip Out on though. I think Hip Out on Garchomp is such a, it's such a safe lead. It has aggressive speed tearing, it has yawn, and it has so much RNG that it's just such a safe play in my opinion. Bring that Annihilate out in the mid game, Lycanroc in the back. I don't think that Don Dozo is the right play versus that squad, but I could be wrong. So there's the Earthworm Gym somewhere. Like there it is. Awesome. I'm happy to see it on the lead. Let's think about what we want to do here. They can Shed Tail. And there's not that much I can do about it. I'm going to yawn the T-Tar and go for a Swords Dance here. And I think that could this could be seen as way too passive. But I think it's probably the right play. This could be seen as way too passive. But it's... Nope, no protects. Wow. Shed Tail. Awesome. No problem there. Ain't no problem there. A Tankaton coming in here. EQ just hits its own bro, bro, don't do that. Dude, what is this guy doing? All right, cool. T-Tar is going to be big sad over the next few turns. And I don't even know what that was supposed to be, bro. That was the most cost ineffective play I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, just click EQ. We're at plus two now. You can go for a fake out of the slot and like EQ again, but like Garchomp doesn't care. We don't need to waste Terra here either. What was that play, dude? I have no idea. Pivoting your own Garchomp, bro. And that's plus two right now. Any protect? Any fake outs? There's a fake out. Dude, they actually hit me with a fake out through all of that RNG. Unlucky, unlucky. The cool thing I like about this is you can just go for a yawn of the slot and just protect and just just chill. Just absolutely chill. We haven't even shown our Fisher tech. We know they have Orthrum. We've already seen all four of their mons. Yeah, I mean, they did get the Tingaton in safely. They did. They did. And it stopped me from going for yawn into that slot, which I would normally want to do. But uh, let's see what they do here. Dragon Claw, Blockerino. Player off Blockerino, Protect the Mundo. And Yawn. Awesome. So they're probably going to be pivoting an Orthworm there. So let's think about what we want to do. Let's protect. That's what we're going to do. We don't need Ghost Terra yet. We're not going to need Ghost Terra. It's EQ here. You're pivoting here, but I want to be able to make sure we kill that. Even through like a potential Shucka Berry or something. And I want to be able to make sure I kill your T-Dar. But you should be pivoting this Garchomp. Awesome. You're going to get the health back. Ain't no problem with that. No problem there. Yep. He's like, hi, bro. I have Earth Eater. It's like, good job for you, bro. Good job. So you can go for another one of those passes. Um, again, I can actually just click Earthquake again. Because <laughs> like your teammates can't eat this stuff all day. Let's go for Yawn into that slot. Yeah, let's just go for Rock Slide. Rock Slide might even make that thing not um, able to go for its Shed Tail. Let's keep going. He's probably over-respecting um, 
Wow, they want a speed tire or they're scarfed. They miss though. They miss though. Oh, do we miss though? Can we get a flinch? Iron defense. Okay. Drowsy nut slots really, really good. I actually don't mind that they're going with like that much. Um, that's going to be an iron, or a, what is it? The rock that increases your sandstorm turns there. So we have a Nihilip that we can just like annihilate this guy, Lamau. So EQ yourself. Easy pieces. So he's, he's nap time. You're about to be nap time. We live forever. We're Hippowdon. Hippowdon. And we're going to pivot out Garchomp for Annihilate and go for a Slock Off. You're like, what? You're pivoting out plus two Garchomp? That's fine. No big deal. So you can go for a Body Press into my Garchomp slot or Body Press over there. Absolutely fine. No big deal. So let's see. Garchomp's probably the right play here. We'll reset up an SD. And we'll just go for a final gambit into the Orthworm. SDs. Woke up, never lucky, one turn sleep. Oh, dude, we're trading out here. We have put this guy's won every single speed tie. We are using a plus speed Garchomp, right? Like, yeah. He's just won like every single speed tie. He has to send that T tar back out. So let's think about the play here. I think you EQ and actually like I really think that you EQ and Rock Slide. He still hasn't teared yet, but if you want a flying tear here, you're gonna be big sad. And if we can flinch your Garchomp there, that'd be great too. We actually need just a little bit more damage. We don't really have to care about um the bug? 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 Bro! Flinch though, dude! Yeah, yeah. Dude, that T-Tar fucking ate it. And then he earthquaked back. Dude, this is the fucking weirdest game. Yeah, I think we lose. Um, we actually have to like win a rock slide, get the T tar off the board, and then we have to win a second one to get the EQ. Yeah, we lose. Ah, oh well. Good play from our opponent. It's a weather war, so like Hippowdon wants to come, but it doesn't want to come in the front. We want to lead Annihilate and just punish because they don't have anything that can actually like win versus Annihilate. Like, I think Annihilate Garchomp's really good with like Hippowdon. We can also like, this is our first Dozo matchup, right? So we actually have to approach this as the Dozo connoisseurs. Let's see. We want to go Hippowdon. We want to go Garchomp. We want to go Annihilate to deal with some of those, especially that guy over there. And then that means that we would just have Dozo. That's not great. We could use the Lycan Rock here. I like that. Annihilate, Garchomp, Lycan Rock, Hippowdon. All right, so that's Wide Guard potential. So we just go after the Belly Bolt, right? Or do we want to go? We can go after the Frost Moth, I guess. And just SD. It could be Sash, but like that's fine. Water, bro. Wide guard, there it is. Easy. What are you using here? Terra? Terra Blast? Muddy water, bro. Ow. Ow! Ooh, accuracy drop. Dude, never lucky. It's okay. There's the A bomb. So we underspeed a bomb so much was a safe play here. So now their blizzard's on 100 percent accurate. We're just gonna go for a yawn into that spot. Drop the Protect. They could pivot out if they want. That's why we're hitting the Belly Bolt slot. And uh, next turn, we're just going to weave in a Protect. Go for an EQ. Yo. You can totally Muddy Water me if you want, bro. You could miss, right? All right, cool. We're good to go. All right, as long as we hit these, we're in a great spot. So just go for a big Protect Amundo here. We could EQ here. I'd probably KO the Belly Bolt, but like, I'll just go for the EQ. See, I love this core, being able to weave in those protects and yawns. It just makes it so much easier to use Garchomp correctly. We have Axie Drops here, but we want to hit these. Ah, that sucks. Leech Seed gets blocked, bro. Nice protect me. So we can go for a Rock Slide here. Um, pivot out for Belly Bolt. Awesome. Rock Slide misses again. Dude, that first Muddy Water was way too big. Let's see what they use here. It doesn't matter if they actually take out the Garchomp. Cool. I'm happy to really I'm really happy to stick the Drowsy on that. Wanna hit this? Come on. Yes! Whoa, that guy ate it! Dude, the belly bolt's so big, bro. Do you miss again though? Bright powder! Ayo! 
Okay, and so we can just rock slide there. And probably go for like a yawn. He could have ice shard. That would suck, but it's not the end of the world. All oh, the big rock slides. Cool, yep. Big blizzard here. Roar Veil, not bad. Yeah, there's just no way they cycle it though. So all we realistically have to do is just hit one more move on both of those. And there's no reason to not double protect her, I don't think. This hippo set's legendary. It's really good. It's so good. Like, it's, I'm glad you guys realize this hippo set. We, we double protect her to block the leech seed. Um, so they have to go to sleep. And now we can just go for rock slide and then drowsy that guy. And then we win. Like, it's the... Oh my god, never lucky. Get a flinch. Any flinchers? Yo. All right. You guys ready to do this? We're going to EQ because it's a higher accuracy. You just want to get the bomb off the board. And talk about accuracy, bro. Bro, Fisher. It's completely okay to hit her on a bomb stone here. Forfeit. Oh, we take those wins, though. Amazing you can save replays and losses and then review it with someone or just yourself, for example. Also let you think twice. Yeah, it's big. Big flinches. You have this hip out on set. It completely changes how sand plays. It lets you play sand at the tempo that you want it to be, which is amazing. I'm going to go Hippo here. I think Hippo is still good versus Torkoal teams. And I don't mind Garchomp versus all of these. I think Garchomp's great. We can even go with a mid-game Annihilate. And they're going to be over-respecting bringing things like Clear Smog and Moose to do with these guys. So I just bring Lycanroc. Mimikyu, awesome. And the Lycanroc. Cool. We can go for so many things here. I think that you just yawn this slot. And go for just an EQ. We don't mind that we're EQing here. It doesn't matter at all. At all. We're going to let you trick room. It's totally your trick room, bro. No one says it's not. Wisp the Garchomp, bro. Okay. Wisp's my chomp, huh? You hit me with a Sand Veil, too, dude. I had all the right plays. Let's think about what we want to do there. You could Wisp here. I don't think there's a problem with Protect EQ here. I don't think there's a problem. We just play a little bit passive. Awesome. We want to see what they're going to do here. Probably going to go Grass Terra to stop Spore. Yeah, so we're just going to Grass Terra it next turn. Hmm. There's no reason to set up anymore. I'm, I'm actually fine doing this again. Yeah, we just want to do damage with the Garchomp. Cool. Yeah, Hippo doesn't care about that, like, at all. Ice Punch miss, though, bro! Oh, Maverick, thank you for the Prime sub. Appreciate it, friend. Big Drowsy over there. Big Drowsy about to be going off over there in a minute. Oh, yeah, they just scoop it up. Dude, do you, see, do you see the Hippo value? Do you see the Hippo value? You know, these sort of streams. If you guys like seeing more streams like this, let me know. Where we just make one Pokemon change how a core already plays, and it completely, like, changes how the team's supposed to get played. I think it's so nice. I think it's so nice.